or circular cities. Something we know is both extremely important for uh, assessing our progress towards our circular transition, but something at the same time that we know is extremely challenging to do this. Um, what are we looking at? What indicators are we using? What levels are we using at that uh, for the indicators? What data is available? What data is relevant? And what level um, are we assessing all of these on? So we have a number of interesting presentations today. Um, we will have five presentations um, before we then kick off into separate uh, discussion groups to talk about your experiences with, um, with indicators as well. Um, we will start with a short presentation from my colleague uh, Nikolai Jakobi, um, who will set the scene in terms of indicators and uh, what some of the issues are around this and the importance, of course, of indicators. Uh, we then have a presentation from Anda Ezagir from um, uh, the OECD uh, on the indicator inventory that was carried out. Elma Willems from uh, Circular Flanders and Luke Aletz from KU uh, Leuven will then talk to us about the Circular Flanders monitor. Um, and then we have two presentations from CCD signatories uh, from Paris Grand Metropole um, and also from Leuven about their experiences so far in establishing uh, an indicator and monitoring framework. A couple of housekeeping rules before we start. Um, if I could ask you all to make sure that in your name uh, on the right hand side of the screen, you have included your organization so that we can all see where everybody is from. Um, hopefully that's a fairly simple process, but if anyone's unsure, then hopefully uh, Dom can help you out in the chat. Um, as you will have already seen, the webinar is being recorded. This recording, together with the slides that are presented and also notes, will be available afterwards in our shared folder. Um, the webinar recording will not go further, so this will not be made published, um, although hopefully we can make the presentations uh, available as, as PDFs on the website. Please stay muted while others are speaking. Um, if you have any questions, you can either raise those directly in the chat, which will be monitored throughout the webinar, or of course you can raise your hand as well. Um, if you are have any having any technical problems, um, you can write directly to the hosts in the chat, or you can sell, send an email to my colleague Dominic, who should be available to help if necessary. Okay, well the agenda I've already talked through, um, we have about two hours um, this afternoon. And that includes following the, the presentations that we will hear, a roughly 25 minute, half hour um, discussion session where we will break you eat, each into three different groups um, where we will talk about some of your own experiences before we then come back and uh, reflect on those jointly at the end of the webinar. Just very quickly, I'd like to give you an update on the Circular Cities Declaration itself and where we are with this. Um, overall, we now have 68 signatories of the declaration, many of those who are here today, uh, covering 22 different countries right across Europe. So we have an excellent spread of, signatory, of signatories now within the community. Um, just here's the full list. We can highlight a few of the newer ones. We have Rosalaire in Belgium. We have Frankfurt am Main in Germany. Uh, we have our first Irish representative, Dun Leary in Rathdown County. Um, we have Manresa in Spain. Um, and two rather recent uh, signatories, we have uh, Zurich from Switzerland and we have Gothenburg from Sweden. So the group is growing and this is wonderful to see. Hopefully for the next webinar, we will beat the 70 mark. Okay, quick update on some of our activities and the main one of those happening, which we have been communicating to you all about is the Circular Cities Declaration Annual Report. Um, and here I would like to quickly pass across to my colleague, uh, Simon Grissy who can say a couple of words about this. Thank you, Simon. So as you know, we carried out this reporting last year, so most of you contributed. Um, and we plan to make a report out of it. So uh, this task is in, uh, is in the making. Uh, during the summer, we wrote uh, city pages uh, for all of the cities who submitted reports. And uh, then we asked you to review those pages, and you did. And we thank you very much for this. And we are now writing the other sections of the report. Uh, so mostly, what are the main trends on circular economy in European cities? What are the challenges that cities are facing? And uh, yeah, that's it for the content. And so we are writing uh, those, and we'd like uh, to publish the report anytime soon, so in the, in the coming months. That's it. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Simon. So I think this is going to be a really interesting publication, um, and I hope you will all have a chance to, to feed into that and certainly to circulate it once done. Okay. 
So, without further ado, I think we can quickly move on to our presentations. Unless Pavel has managed to join us in the, the meantime, but I guess not, Dom? Uh, no, he hasn't. All right, okay. So we, we had hoped that um, Pavel Misiga from DG RTD um, will be joining us and make a very short intervention. Um, but I think he will only be able to join us later on in the webinar, so perhaps we can do that later. In which case, let's move straight across to our first session of presentations. Um, and kicking straight off with my colleague Nikolai Jakobi, who's going to set the scene for us in terms of local circular economy monitoring, challenges and opportunities. So Nikolai, hopefully you are ready and able to share your screen. I'll stop sharing mine. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, and also welcome from my side to everybody who's, who's here. It's a pleasure to, to go a little bit um, deeper into this important topic. I'm trying to uh, keep it very um, short and just um, talk about a few, um, few things um, relevant to, to, to the topic from, from our perspective uh, and hopefully opening up some, some questions or issues or uh, terms that, uh, that, that will be picked up later on in, from the subsequent speakers. So I want to start with a quick narrative um, that I think is key for, for to answer the question why monitoring is important. So that narrative is that uh, material use really um, has uh, had a great impact on the development uh, in the industrial revolution and really has been um, sort of the, the, the fuel for, for the economic development happening uh, for most of the 20th century um, with then having a, a, a change uh, really um, in, in terms of um, the, uh, the notion that our economy could be decoupled from, from that material base. Uh, and I'm sure most of you uh, have, have seen this or are aware of this, of this narrative. Um, but the point is really that this narrative is supported by, uh, by data, by evidence, by data that is, relates to monitoring. Um, and what you see here is precisely that. It is the, uh, shows the, the global material extraction in that over this 20th century until uh, 2018 or so. Uh, Nikolai, can I just well stop you? Yes. Are, are you sharing a presentation? Yes. Ah, because we don't see it on the screen. <laughs> we can just see you talking to us. Oh, okay. Th thank you very much for, for making me aware. <laughs> that's, uh, that's incredible. Okay. You should be able to see something. Some, something is coming. Now we've wow. got it. Yep, absolutely. Now we see it. The, qu the question is now, do you see the... We don't the see it in presenter. Window? We you see it with, it with the notes view as well now. Okay, then let me just quickly um, try to fix this, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Now you see my emails for one second, but it should just be a short moment. Is it now better? That's better. Yes. Okay, so, sorry for this interruption. Uh, well, exactly, but, but uh, this is exactly the, the point that this narrative is about um, about decoupling of, of our economy in terms of its material basis. And uh, the, the main point I want to make here is that this uh, is, is, let's say, one of the key reasons why monitoring around this topic is needed, namely to support or, or maybe disprove um, some of these claims. Because after all, it is really a claim that, you know, the circular economy leads to all of that. It leads to resource decoupling. It leads maybe to to the so-called impact decoupling that, you know, the resources being produced and consumed don't have a devastating impact on the environment. But, but um, however it may be, it is, it is key to, to center the, the monitoring and, and, and evaluation around this topic, uh, I think, uh, on, this, on this key, very basic question. Having said that, I think it is also just jumping a little further down, it is also important to, um, to look at at some of the other whys uh, in terms of the monitoring. And you see here uh, also kind of a well-known um, strategy matrix around nine strategies for the circular economy, with some being those that you know, would lead to sort of a full circular economy and some being pertinent to a linear economy. And uh, uh, it, having said that, I think it is important to um, really making sure that the impact intended um, with this is 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 actually um, is actually with a circular economy plan or or objective is really being realized and that the right strategies are being chosen for that, 
and uh, monitoring can of course help with that as well um, and also with balancing trade-offs between between these because when you look at these strategies clearly you know you may may argue that uh, refuse the, the the very top one um, you know is maybe very good for the environment but perhaps not so good for the economy um, uh, where you already have sort of a, a conflicting priorities uh, or a potential trade-off which is not not meant to be sort of a radical statement uh, but let's say in tendency that that may be the case and of course monitoring can can really support that and clearly uh, it it is instrumental uh, i think especially for the circular economy bit because it is still not so well structured i would say in the way it is being dealt with in in many cities maybe not as structured as with the climate agenda for instance therefore it's it's quite relevant to make sure it really addresses and informs policies and informs uh, financiers for, for for project development and implementation uh, and clearly, of course, there's a stakeholder component to it as well. Um, and clearly there's a transparency and accountability component uh, to, to this whole topic, which is of course also key to really communicate to, to the relevant stakeholders and for a city or for a region to um, be accountable towards uh, its citizens. And maybe going a slightly a bit more into more details. I hope it's not too many more details, but I'm, I'm sure some of the colleagues will definitely talk about this in just a bit. Um, there are a couple of challenges, particularly around uh, monitoring through um, with uh, material flow analysis, which is of course one component that is being more and more looked into and being used, and that is the system boundary. So, so a, a big challenge around around that local, specifically the local monitoring, is is around that. So that you choose a, a system based on rules <clears throat> that you follow through with all the other entities around, so that you can actually achieve some type of aggregation between them, and you don't end up having an incoherent framework. Clearly, um, such a monitoring uh, also allows. Uh, maybe linking to the, the, the strategy slide um, to sort of prioritize between those strategies and between the impact achieved um, because, um, because those can be, can be seen, can be analyzed using such a framework. And um, of course, there's a quite a data uh, a challenge. And again, the colleagues will know that much better, especially around the local level, which has to be balanced in the sense that uh, I believe like a <clears throat> cost benefit uh, analysis to be done in terms of not reaching for the stars, you know, if the data is not there and cannot be uh, obtained, uh, but also trying to be ambitious. Uh, so it's a bit of a stretch, I believe, that is the challenge here at this point. And of course, in terms of interpreting the results, uh, there's also, of course, a, a very, um, it can be done in very different ways. And uh, um, sometimes, you know, a simple, you know, circular economy equals sustainability sort of statement is, is a little bit difficult and challenging. It's something that, of course, um, um, is something that stakeholders and policymakers like, but that uh, that researchers are sometimes have difficulties to provide that because of all the all the um, trade offs and challenges that that are associated with just becoming more circular while increasing the overall material use or the overall energy use, which of course does not make you or make a city more sustainable per, per se. Of course, there's a waste implication that is um, that relates again a bit to data harmonization that uh, within such a monitoring framework, um, and, and I'm, I want to emphasize again that this example is really about a socio-metabolic approach uh, and there are different approaches. So that is an example um, that in such a framework, there are many data challenges and also around ha harmonizing different data sets. For instance, the waste data reported by cities is not, not comparable without some methodological steps to the material flow data. So that cannot be seemingly merged. Uh, and of course, uh, there's, there's a couple of more, more uh, sort of uh, considerations around, around the import and export of materials in, in such a small system like a city and even if it's a medium-sized city it's even more so um, um, uh, looking at the fact that most of the materials are coming from outside and are imports into the system and that um, the the leverage points for for a city to really affect 
resources, also basic materials, are sometimes quite limited because they're all coming from elsewhere. Uh, so it's really about the use phase in, in, this, in this case. So these are some considerations, and ICLE is looking into this um, a little bit um, through um, ICLE and uh, uh, also in, in this initiative um, really being, being uh, sort of the, the, the ground uh, theory um, is really this sort of very basic transition model, you know, from, from, from stakeholder um, uh, engagement and different actors acting in different ways and hopefully inducing uh, a change in business model uh, and a change in individual behavior, clearly, that leads then to, to closing loops and has all of these environment and well-being benefits uh, at the end, um, which is, again, is, it's a claim, uh, really, and uh, I think it's one uh, as best as possible, but it's, uh, it's still a, a little bit of a claim, and monitoring needs to needs to support that claim in an, in a in a in a feasible way um to 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 um have its purpose really and i think i'm going to skip the the full detail here and maybe just as a last slide sort of stress uh, the some of the points i've already said but um that uh, some principles that really um i think are key which <clears throat> which is that um the, the monitoring should re, should be embedded uh, into sort of a robust framework that um, allows linking, uh, you know, the strategic visionary elements of a of a city action plan to uh, to a more broken down uh, um, uh, objectives, then into actions and then indicators. As an example, to not end up reporting on a on a random list of indicators <clears throat> that are, have something to do with circular economy but are not rooted in in a framework really another point is about the scope which is of course uh, i think also important to really make clear what is being monitored and why is it a progress is it a, a sort of an interim process is it an outcome is it an impact is it a response and just to to name drop here the 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 dipsier framework is one of the attempts to to do such a thing um, that I'm sure some of you would know, but just as an example, the system boundary I've mentioned already, the data I've mentioned already, uh, but I think also in terms of using the findings, um, I think again, it is really important to make that clear also from the beginning of, of, of designing such a process because um, it, it, it helps um, shape the way the, the indicators and the messages tailored from them uh, reach the audience um, uh, that is needed and are not hanging in the air and or worse need much more additional interpretation by research and scholars before it can go out. Yeah, I, I know this was uh, maybe a, a, a lot to start with, but I hope it has opened some that was useful and opened up some issues and points that that uh, the subsequent speakers will will pick up. Thank you so much. Back to you, Simon or Dominic. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a really helpful basis for the discussions this afternoon. I think you've outlined very nicely there exactly why we need to be doing this, but some of the difficulties that we are facing in doing precisely that. Um, and that's hopefully what some of the, the, the following speakers will dig into a little more. How has this been applied? Um, and and I th we will start off this process with um, Ander Izeger from the OECD, uh, giving us an overview of the indicator uh, sets that have been identified um, at, a, at a wider scale. So, um, Ander, maybe I can pass presentation over to you. Yes, we can yes. see your screen. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Simon. Um, thank you, Clay, for, for the invitation. For us, it's a, a pleasure to, to be part of, of this webinar. Uh, okay, yes. So, um, since the beginning of of our program on the OECD program on the circular economies in, in cities and, and regions, we have always prioritized the, the importance of measuring and measurement of, of the circular economy. So uh, our program lies on policy dialogues. So we support cities and regions in their transition through some policy dialogues. Then we have uh, discussed the, the issue of measurement in all the four um, roundtables on the circular economy that we have organized. So in in each event, we had a session dedicated to to measurement and to the indicators because we understand that it's something, it's a, a really uh, key uh, topic for for cities to to move towards circular economy. 
And the third pillar of our program is the measurement. Here, what we have done, and this is something that I will explain uh, during my presentation, we have developed a tool for cities and regions to, to measure the, the, the progress made in terms of governance dimensions. We have applied this tool to the city of Montreal. Uh, and, and after that, they have been able to, they are working on the launch of the circular economy strategy. We, and as you also mentioned, we have uh, created or uh, designed an inventory of, uh, of circular economy indicators. And right now we are working with the Italian Ministry for Ecolog Ecological Transition on uh, indicators and, and measurement. So uh, in 2020, we launched a, a report, a synthesis report, which is based on the results of more than 50 cities around the world. And we had a dedicated section on, on measurement. And here, uh, the main, uh, let's say, answers or the main uh, replies from, from these cities uh, in terms of the, the motivations or the need to, to measure the, the circular economy are these four that you can see in, in the slide. So the first one would be the importance of uh, raising awareness. So measuring progress and measuring impacts can uh, raise awareness on the circular economy. Uh, a second motivation could be the uh, the need to to make the case for for the circular economy. As if you are able to to show the benefits, it's possible to to engage more people and to to really have a, a greater interaction with uh, stakeholders. Uh, the third uh, point would be the the, the 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 need to trigger action, meaning that if you have the information, if you have the data, and you have all the all the knowledge, uh, this can really help uh, design better policies and design better circular economy strategies. Let's say so. So having these indicators can really help in, in this field. And finally, the the four uh, reason would be the the importance of monitoring performance and evaluate evaluation the the results. So. Uh, you can really see uh, the effectiveness of your strategy and how things are working and of course adapt uh, your actions or your targets to to to, to the results or according to the results that you are you are seeing so so this is also a way to to really uh, adapt uh, the, the the law or the super economy strategy uh, depending on the performance that, that you see but for this of course we need data and, and information uh, so yes, here you can see the 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 cover of of this inventory. So in 2020, what we did basically we collected more than 470 uh, circular economy indicators from 29 uh, circular economy strategies uh, from the local, regional, uh, national uh, levels of governments and the uh, date from. 2018 and 2020, meaning that right now, uh, if we would do the same measures, there would be much more indicators to, to be added. But uh, yeah, uh, we saw that there was a gap here because uh, in, in this synthesis report, uh, one of the main issues that the cities had was that they wanted to, to really measure, but they had difficulties to, to, to measure, to develop indicators, to also to use existing indicators and we wanted to analyze which was the state of the art of measurement uh, at the local uh, and, and national and national level and here uh, let's say that we classified or we leveled the different indicators in in, in these uh, five categories and well you you can see that uh, environmental indicators prevail followed by uh, governance followed them by uh, economic and business then we have few uh, indicators on infra infrastructure, which covers, for example, the existence of tools, technologies uh, to enable the circular economy. And finally, we saw that uh, indicators uh, addressing the so societal uh, factor, let's say, uh, were not were quite scarce, mainly in terms of the job creation uh, from from the circular economy. Uh, the others, uh, the other categories, the economic uh, category could cover, for example, the, the number of uh, funding or the existence of fundings uh, for, for the circular economy projects. Uh, in terms of governance, we had, for example, the existence or not on of uh, 
of, of circular economy strategies, uh, the number of circular economy laws, uh, terms or in also issues related to stakeholder engagement, uh, numbers of stakeholders engaged, and also capacity building, which can be measured, for example, with the number of uh, training courses. Uh, and of course, environmental issues, which uh, as we will see later on, were mainly focusing waste uh, management. So yes, uh, in this slide, uh, once we have seen the categories, we also, uh, let's say, saw the different sectors these indicators uh, belong to. And as you can see, waste is the main, uh, the main sector uh, in, in this in, uh, inventory, uh, which is something it's not surprising, let's say, because sometimes uh, there is, we all know that there is this trend or tendency to 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 mix uh, circular economy and uh, efficient uh, waste management. So many of these uh, indicators were addressing uh, waste uh, generation, recycling, and all the process. Uh, then we had a few uh, fewer indicators in terms of the, the use of material or material extraction, few indicators on uh, more circular economy related uh, topics like uh, sharing, repairing, uh, and so on. And then we had uh, really in key uh, sectors like uh, built environment, which usually were linked to, to the waste uh, from built environment sector energy, food, water, uh, and so on. And here, uh, you, you, you will see that 30, 31% of indicators, let's say that were not uh, sector specific. They were uh, they, they, they were really related to, to the strategy. So for example, the existence of not or the creation of a awareness raising campaign, which is really tackling the circular economy as such. It wasn't or in a generic way, let's say, and not targeting uh, any particular sector. In terms of uh, the challenge that uh, we identified here, well, the, the first one was the lack of an agreed definition. So we have seen that uh, uh, there are many definitions. Uh, the literature review identified uh, more than 100 uh, definitions. So of course, if we had, uh, if not everybody is uh, understanding the same for the circular economy, it's difficult to to measure it, and and, and here maybe uh, can be linked to to this uh, existence of mainly waste uh, link um, uh, indicators. Another uh, important uh, gap or issue we 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 identify was the this lack of harmonization. So, for example, we are seeing that many cities or many national governments were measuring similar things, but uh, let's say that uh, the, the the methodology was different or not uh, not clarified. Also the, the units uh, were different. So here it can be also a problem uh, to, to have a, a greater comparability in uh, between different indicators and also to, to, to use them. The third uh, main challenge that we identified was the this incomplete uh, information. So, for example, sometimes some cities were, uh, let's say, suggesting indicators, but then there was no data, and and and, and of course it, it was complicated to 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 measure and and linked to this incomplete uh, information. Uh, I would like to highlight these data-driven indicators. We have seen that. Uh, sometimes uh, most of indicators were uh, well uh, rely on the existence of, of data. So if there is no data, uh, cities and regions and, and national governments were not developing uh, indicators that uh, well, more generic indicators on, on the on the circular economy. And here also, I would say that this can also explain this uh, somehow over representation of the waste the management uh, indicators in, in, in this inventory. Another uh, issue would be the lack of integration at, at the macro, micro, meso, meso level. So sometimes uh, it's difficult to, to, to use indicators that are being designed for national governments at the local and uh, and, and regional level, so it's not always uh, easy to to make these these comparisons. 
And uh, last uh, but not least, I would like to, to focus on this uh, lack of systemic uh, approaches uh, as some uh, the resources of, of as the wasting of some sectors can be resources for for another there is no way or there is there is there was no uh, we were missing indicators also in terms of the mainly on design on repair on you know it was very much focused on, on the production and consumption and the treatment of of the waste generated so yeah here just uh the, the main uh, takeaways that we identified from from, from this uh, study was the need to have uh, a common definition on the on the circular economy. Also, important to understand what what is uh, aimed to to be measured. Also, the reason and, and for whom, who is the uh, why this information is useful and which will be the the the, the final use. Also, uh, this important and point on, on on the fact that uh, most of indicators have been designed for a linear economy so it's important as i mentioned before to to focus on more uh, to think outside the box and address more uh, more in the, uh, on areas more linked to the circular economy like uh, the sharing economy for example and also uh, well we we have seen this a representation of environmental uh, of, of environmental um, indicators, but other uh, areas uh, should be also addressed, like uh, it's the case for for governance. And here, basically, at the OECD, what we have done, we have uh, designed the scoreboard on the governance of the circular economy. So what we have done, we have identified twelve key dimension governance domain dimensions. Uh, that uh, we have identified as key for circular, uh, for, 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 for national and subnational governance to move towards the circular economy. And we have developed uh, a tool, a self-assessment uh, self tool that uh, provides uh, governments with the opportunity to see where they stand for each of these uh, dimensions. And they, they are also here, they are able to, to measure progress in, in this field. So uh, in the in the right uh, side of, of, of the slide, you can see, let's say, the visualization of, of the tool and how it would be for for um, for, for different uh, governments that are applying this. And here, I would like to raise the, the case of Montreal. So uh, in last year, we, we, we used this uh, tool with the government of, of Montreal and well, uh, we the, the the main the main findings were that there was the a, a, a regulatory framework was missing. Also, this tool helped to uh, engage with different stakeholders and also to identify which which were the the main sectors um, for, for for the city. And well, building on on this uh, on the output of of this work with Montreal, the cities right now with all this information and with all the data uh, uh, in terms of where they stand for for each of these categories they are uh, this is the basis for the design of a circular economic strategy that they are currently uh, working on i'm i will finish now i think i i, I talked for close to 10 15 minutes but uh, of course i invite all the cities uh, present today to to make any question on the tools that we have developed and and also on the inventory. So thank you very much. And I would be looking forward to the panel discussion. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ando. Really interesting um, presentation, underscoring some of what uh, Nikolai was saying at the beginning, but then a very interesting analysis of the types of indicators that are used um, and those gaps, as you point out. I, I, I would like to, to ask if anyone in the, the audience has questions. Uh, but before I do that, a question of my own regarding the the scorecard is that available then publicly for for any to use or is that something that you are still developing together with the individual cities such as montreal you're working with no the the scoreboard is uh, available it's, um, it's it was launched in 2020 in the synthesis report i will share now the the link to to this report and and also i will share the the inventory but yeah it's uh, it's open access to to everybody yeah. very good Great, good to hear. 
Okay, are there any questions for Ander before we move on? You can either raise your hand or put them in the chat. Yeah, yes, Simon, from yes. my side, <laughs> I, I was also uh, triggered by the scoreboard, which is indeed uh, interesting um, and, and might, might be very helpful to uh, work on the governments of local uh, institutions. Uh, but um, what is your uh, estimation? How, how much time would it take to, to uh, work with this scoreboard? Uh, would you say it's like uh, a couple of days or it, it's like three weeks or, 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 or 10 weeks uh, to work through it? Well, I would say, uh, of course, it would, it would depend on, on the city. And, but yes, we, we have uh, in this uh, report, we have uh, included the, the methodology. So, and, and well, I would say it should be done uh, with targeted uh, stakeholders. Uh, it should be also uh, be prioritized uh, on some sectors. Uh, so, of course, um, the idea is to have just targeted uh, workshops on, on this and, 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 and work with the tool. So I would say that uh, maybe two, three days uh, working on that would be would be uh, would be enough uh, for that. But here, of course, it would depend on, on the city. It's important to have all the stakeholders uh, uh, identified and also to have all the stakeholders present uh, in this uh, kind of workshops because sometimes what we have seen is that the 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 idea of the yeah the, the, the view of the city if for example if the if the city council conducts this self assessment maybe they think that they are much more advanced than uh, what uh, they are in reality or the other way around so uh, it's it's really important that to 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 conduct this uh, exercise, you have all the stakeholders or all, 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 all the key stakeholders uh, for the transition in the room, and together with the local authorities, you uh, conduct this this work. Of course, we have uh, the OECD can um, accompany cities uh, with this. We we have organized this this with um, with Montreal, but. Uh, the information is available, and if cities want to do it, do it themselves, uh, they have the information ready for them. So I would say, uh, answering to your question, two three days uh, of workshop would be would be enough. Of course, there should be much more work uh, in advance, but uh, that would be the, the estimated time. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Under, are you actively looking for other cities and regions to work with at the moment to be to work together with the OECD or what's the status? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, we have had this really interesting um, experience with the city of Montreal. We had, for example, we with Montreal, we organized three workshops. So in each of the workshops, we were focusing on some three four uh, governance uh, dimensions uh, and of course we, we we it has been really rich experience for for us and also ba based on on this uh, on the results of this assessment uh, now the city has been able to to prioritize some sectors to also to prioritize some stakeholders and areas for improvement so of course we we are open to to collaborate with new cities uh, here i i will also share the the output of the of the work with Montreal, which is uh, only in French, but you can have an idea of of which can be the the result of of a collaboration with the OECD. But yes, of course, we're really open to 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 be in touch with cities. Great to hear. Okay, so that's uh, an open invitation to those in this uh, meeting as well today. All right, if there are no further questions, we, we can also, as I say, continue to put your questions in the chat as well. But let's move across to our next presentation um, from Elma and Luke. Elma, will we start with you in this case? Yes, that's fine. I will try and share my PowerPoint presentation um, right now. Just confirm if it's there. We, we can see, but it's not in presenter mode at the moment. Yep, perfect. All right. Uh, great to have you all here together. Um, 
I'm Elmar Willems from uh, Circular Flanders, um, and we are based at uh, the Public Flemish Waste Agency in Flanders. Um, together with Luc Allers, we'll take you through our story about uh, circular cities and about governance and monitoring. Um, our ambition in, in Flanders is very, uh, very easy and very uh, straightforward. We want uh, a decoupling, a reduction of material footprint, and we want to do is this in a public-private effort. So it's very simple and straightforward, um, but of course, then it gets complicated. If you just state this ambition, then that's not enough. Then you have to make, um, uh, you have to do a lot, a lot of things. You have to uh, get people together. You have to um, provide the numbers. You have to um, specify your targets, etc. So our team, and our organization is very much engaged to, uh, to, to reach these goals. Um, the reduction of our material footprint is a, a quite a difficult one, of course. It, it looks pretty, it looks good to have a reduction of your material footprint and to, to keep growing in prosperity, to, to keep your welfare and well being levels uh, uh, and at, at a high rate. But at the same time, uh, have, have uh, a different. Um, a strategy to cope with your material footprint and to uh, reduce it actually and to have a very resilient economy uh, at the same time um, so this is what we try to do um, our approach uh, is is to to work with six different themes six different strategic agendas which of course mirror the, the main uh, sectors and uh, priorities that are set by uh, europe as well and they all uh, come back in a certain uh, way in different regions and, and countries. Uh, you have the circular construction sector, you have the chemistry and plastics as a uh, priority, you have water, bioeconomy, the food chain and manufacturing. Um, these are the ones that we have chosen, but they are, are uh, quite uh, similar in other uh, countries. Uh, we have an overarching roadmap and a vision of what we want to achieve together. And we have, um, and there we go to the next slide. We have seven levers, accelerators for overcoming barriers and spreading good practices. Um, these agendas, these strategic agendas have to be uh, supported by seven cross-cutting um, uh, levers um, that, that are able to, to uh, accelerate the transition um, and to, to overcome the barriers that we all uh, experience. And we want to work on policy measures and legislation. We want to work on circular procurement. We work on uh, sensibilization and communication. We, we have a strategic research agenda. Uh, of course, we want to reach out to entrepreneurs and um, uh, support uh, uh, businesses. Um, we work on the theme of finance and we work on the theme of jobs and skills. So um, we have at least 30 organizations that are, that are together with us are in the core of this, of this work uh, to carry out this approach. Um, we have uh, co-workers and uh, um, people who coordinate with us, with the public agencies, uh, these agendas and this, and this work. So Circular Cities is, um, is my, actually my, my theme, my, my focus. Um, I think, and we all think that uh, circular cities are the place and the, the context in which we should strive for a circular economy and circular society. Um, um, we think uh, they all have to cope with a lot of challenges, um, job creation, uh, resilient economy, spatial planning, uh, social inequality, mobility, et cetera, a lot of issues that they have to take care of. And we see a circular economy as a catalyst for the welfare and well-being of a city. It should reinforce local economies and jobs. It should contribute to the climate and sustainability goals, and it improves social cohesion. Uh, and and the, the, the targets that we have with social policies. Um, so this is a very, of course, a broad picture and a broad introduction. Um, and that's why we have also started with a, a big project uh, that's called Local Circular uh, to reach more cities and municipalities, uh, public service companies, uh, intermunicipal bodies of cooperation, regional development agencies and provinces. 
as they have been involved actually so far within the circular economy strategies of Flanders, but at the same time, it has not been structured and is, there is still room for improvement. Um, there is no common uh, approach by the, these different cities uh, and by these different uh, bodies of um, uh, and institutions. And we'd like to improve their cap capabilities. We would like to improve their insights and to work with them to formulate uh, ambitious circular goals um, embedded in their own uh, plans, in their own ambitions, and uh, implement uh, concrete actions and projects and give visibility to the things that we see that are happening, the things that we think should happen, and uh, to stimulate cooperation between those uh, different parties. So um, for the last six to seven years, there, has been, there have been a lot of initiatives by those cities and municipalities at the same time we think we can get it uh, a level higher we can grow uh, with with insights and with projects and with ambitions so this this is our goal and we are lucky uh, to announce that we have been chosen as a pilot uh, by the circular cities and regions initiative uh, so we get some tailored support uh, from the uh, circular cities regions initiative uh, and coordination and support office and that will um, launch very soon uh, in, in a couple of weeks. There will be a gathering in Brussels and we will work on circular systemic solutions for uh, cities and municipalities in Flanders. Uh, there we would like to improve the connection between climate goals and circular economy goals, which is a specific uh, challenge uh, within, um, within the transition towards a circular economy. So what do we do within the local circular network and project? Uh, we work um, with, in a broad platform. Uh, we provide knowledge and inspiration, uh, examples and tools. And uh, we will uh, also support uh, about 10 specific uh, municipalities and, uh, uh, and, and cities uh, to make up their own circular stra strategic plan or to uh, improve a, a circular pilot project. Um, within their own um, context. Uh, we will dive deeper into the subject of circular procurement. We will um, also discuss about spatial planning and circular city development in more depth. And we will uh, um, continue to work on the issue of monitoring for a circular economy. Um, this will take place in the, in the next uh, uh, year and next year and a half, and hopefully even longer. Uh, because it's quite a big uh, uh, challenge that we face, of course. So what have we done on monitoring within the work that I've been doing in, uh, for, for cities and municipalities? We, of course, have a lot of activities and a lot of output goals uh, that, we, that we can more or less measure. Um, we can measure those results to a certain extent. We can see um, that, that uh, cities are taking up the challenge, that they are formulating plans. Um, we see that our, we want to raise their maturity level. We want to raise their uh, uh, awareness level. And that we can measure to some extent. But then in the end, of course, it should have impact. And there it gets complicated. There we need um, quantitative and qualitative measures and uh, indicators to, to say, OK, this strategy or an, and, and this focus on circular economy uh, 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 plans has led to, um, for example, real social change or real economic resilience or real um, ecological uh, improvements. It's, um, this is a very important uh, but very complicated task. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 20 output and outcome uh, indicators, will, I will not discuss them here because they are more or less process oriented. Um, I will just um, guide you to some of the more or less uh, uh, impact measures that we, that we have seen already uh, being used uh, within, uh, within our cities and municipalities. Of course, there is the target of um, uh, diminishing waste. And uh, for the next uh, eight years, we want to uh, reduce uh, the amount of residual waste per inhabitant uh, uh, to 100 kilograms per inhabitant. So that's uh, below there on the slide, uh, 100 kilogram, we are now on the level of 140, 150 kilograms. So this is a big challenge already. But it's more or less feasible to measure it. Huh? 
This is one part of the circular economy program and one part of uh, our waste and materials management program, um, but it's uh, more or less uh, feasible to manage and to uh, measure it. It gets more complicated when you want to uh, see real change on the ecological side. Um, the, here are some indicators that are used by the city of Mechelen, um, but it's a very indicative, very indicative uh, first uh, uh, impression what, what you can achieve by having uh, circular economy strategies uh, um, employed, deployed in your city. Uh, you can uh, avoid uh, CO2 emissions by 180, uh, 78 kilotons a year. Um, you can avoid the use of uh, raw materials and resources by 40, seven, uh, 74 kilotons a year. Um, but it's not, um, well, it's just an indication. It's not uh, based on, on extensive research. Um, and this goes the same for economic benefits. You can see, you can have an indication of the amount of jobs that you um, might have and um, that, that, are, that will uh, actually uh, create a growth in jobs and that there will be um, new, new uh, skills as well to be, um, to be developed. Um, so this is for the province of Limburg. They say, okay, we have seen all, so far that our economy, our circle economy has grown by 34% uh, more jobs in comparison to the, the Flemish um, average um, in, in a general uh, way. Um, but this is just a, a first start, a first indicator of um, what we should measure in the end. Um, what we also see is that um, the companies feel themselves more resilient when they employ um, uh, circular strategies, um, but this is uh, only a first and, and uh, one of a kind um, uh, set of questions that we have uh, asked uh, those companies. So we should uh, try to measure and monitor it more uh, in a more structured way in the end. And very important, uh, we think the circular economy should have a social impact. Uh, we have some indicators that it leads to more jobs in the social economy, uh, that people can have access to the labor market more easily, that they are supported by the circular economy strategies. But it's only, again, it's only a first indication. This is an example from the city uh, of Aalst, uh, where we can say, okay, you can have about three to six thousand more jobs um, if you uh, uh, um, try and, and, and have projects on a circular and a social economy uh, field. So this is my, my contribution. Um, um, Luc Allet will take over and talk, you, talk to you about um, the circular city uh, or the circular monitor in general for Flanders and then uh, also discuss some uh, issues on uh, circular city monitoring. Um, when Luc Allertz is trying to open his presentation, uh, let's talk about the question Simon has asked, what do you include in circular jobs? This is indeed a very uh, tricky uh, question um, because the circular economy sectors ha have not been defined so far within economic modelings and economic uh, figures so far. Um, so generally uh, you can uh, in, you would include uh, all those jobs that are uh, um, uh, uh, linked to repair uh, and uh, recycling. Um, and uh, some of these, these uh, sectors have been uh, also coded within uh, economic uh, theory and in the economic uh, monitoring reports. But this is not complete, of course. This is the first, um, first step. And, sorry, just to... Sonia, you also had a question related to jobs does that answer answer your question as well yes basically basically yes i mean we would have to go into more details i think <laughs> well, uh, i i can answer yes. that one it's uh, based on the nazi codes um mm -hmm. yeah a quite um yeah conservative definition of circular economy is the waste and recycling sectors and we have been adjusting um, these uh, nazi codes a bit to see is there other sectors that we would also like to take uh, into account um, it's still a conservative estimation um, 
yeah, the thing is that uh, the typical economic statistics, they do not match with what we want to measure in circular economy. But I want to stress the most important thing is the trend in the number. Um, the absolute number is not too important. Um, if we see these sectors growing, we know that the circular economy is also growing. So, so in, in these numbers, it's better to focus on the trends than, than you have a more correct interpretation. I can actually, um, the figure of Limburg, the province of Limburg, they included job growth in the sectors of re repair, uh, waste management, uh, rental and leasing, um, um, motor vehicle repair, uh, secondhand goods, and the restoration renovation of buildings. They have been able to, to, uh, to, to look into these, these figures, but uh, not more or not less. You know, it's, it's a, still a rough estimate. Okay, is there, if there is no more questions, I can't immediately see it. I can take over from here if that's, if that's fine. Okay, so welcome, good afternoon. I will do a deep dive into our circular economy monitor we have been developing in Flanders. Um, I'm a KU Leuven researcher. I'm also connected to Circular Flanders, so I'm a direct colleague of Elmar, uh, and I'm heading the Circular Economy Policy Research Center. We have it in Flanders in 2011. We work in practice with five-year plans, and of the previous plan, the major deliverable was to make a CE monitor, and now we are continuing to elaborate it, to maintain it, um, and to make it better. So I will talk today only about this monitor. We do other things as well, but you can consult everything on our website um, below. We have everything available in English. So we are an academic consortium, which means that we had the luxury to invest some time in um, thinking like, how can we monitor circular economy in Flanders? Um, there is a separate website also available in English where you can consult this monitor. Um, you can find a collection of indicators. We have about 140 in total. We have a number of uh, analysis pieces where you can discover how we have been interpreting our numbers for Flanders and elaborate a bit more on how we see this uh, circular economy transition. For each indicator, there is um, an info sheet uh, telling about the source of the data, the interpretation, uh, the trends, and so on. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go in detail. You can uh, go to the website and click on the topics you like. Um, what I will do is uh, tell a bit more about the methodology behind it. Um, first of all, we made a material flow analysis of Flanders. This kind of schemes is quite well known to everybody uh, working in this field of circular economy. Um, in purple, you can see that Flanders is a very open economy. Purple is the import and the export of the materials in Flanders. And the local circular economy, that's the green cycle. And at certain nodes in this scheme, you get uh, indicators like the DMC or the DMI and the waste indicators, uh, which gives an idea of how circular we are today. Our circular material use rate is about uh, 21%, uh, which is a nice number. Uh, but of course, circular economy is much more than just closing this loop with recycling. Um, the basic idea about the index, um, yeah, we didn't just want to have an inventory of indicators. We, we start from the um, a basic definition of circular economy. It's about the materials and products that should serve as long and as well as possible, and we don't want negative impacts. So... Um, we focus on circularity, the inflow, the outflow, the closing of the cycles with the different R strategies. And we also um, consider effects in terms of environment, economy, and society. And then we have tried to, uh, of course, to fill this up with the available data. Um, one major concern with making the monitor was that can we make it suffi sufficiently tangible and actionable that we wanted to have more than high level numbers that are interesting, but don't are, are not so easy to show uh, progress at the short term. And that's why we tried to make a kind of conceptual bridge between the macro indicators and the more detailed indicators. The idea is if the economy is a system that fulfills our needs, that will ultimately, uh, ultimately take place with the products we use um, and the ways in which we use them. So if we will go to a transition 
to a circular economy, we will have different products and different ways of using products. And then depending of, on what you're exactly considering, uh, there will be some similarities in strategies. When it's about electronics, then circular economy could go about recycling, about repair, about getting back to metals. When you talk about buildings, then you will highlight uh, different things like the large streams of uh, construction and demolition materials, for instance. So actually in this way, it becomes possible to compile product groups into societal subsystems. We have even been elaborating this a bit um, for those who are interested in the academic details. Here you can find a reference. So um, we talk about uh, need satisfaction systems like uh, mobility, nutrition, construction and housing. Um, and the main idea is that it brings a bit together information from both the consumption and the production side. Um, and yeah, it's of course a monitor is meant um, for policy ma makers to give them insights and to be able to give feedback on what policy is doing. So I just said it to uh, frame it. If you look to the monitor from a company and you want to see, to see how circular is the chemical sector, our monitor won't directly give the answer because it's not made for that purpose. We're actually thinking how we could also get this information for Flanders in our current research. Data gathering was quite complicated. There is a lot of, of uh, sources and actually our research came close to, uh, to action research. Most important thing is that we would have uh, a good understanding of the data because data are there mostly at government because yeah the data are needed to follow up policy or to check whether a legislation is being followed up on and we take this data out of their context and reuse them for circular economy um, indicators um, so that uh, that was a large part of the work um, the data and the stakeholders and then we got arrays of indicators like you can see here for the construction and building system we tried to put together numbers that tell something about where are we heading um yeah i'm not going to dive deep into the conclusions that are specific for flanders uh the major thing is that the monitor clearly showed like okay we do quite well on a certain topics like Elma have already indicated. We decrease on waste production. Recycling is uh, increasing, but still we're consuming lots of materials. Actually, what the monitor shows is that for decades, uh, policy in Flanders has been uh, focusing on waste and recycling. That's also the reason why so much data could be found in the administration. But the next steps of circular economy still needs to take place that's about the quality of recycling which is not contained in the numbers now um, and higher our strategies like repair and reuse to name a few um, actually the conclusion of the monitor is that we are really happy with it it's it's actually i would say uh, the best way to use the currently available indicators and data um, to say something about uh, the state and progress of circular economy um, but further development is needed. It's not only about creating more data or better gathering of data. This is about data governance because we know there is much more detailed data out there, but they are in very different sources under different legal regimes, and it's not easy to just get access to them. So that's really a focal point to further develop um, circular economy monitoring. Um, to go towards the end of my slides, I'm going to make a bit the step towards what this could mean for monitoring in a city context, because um, when doing this work, we realized actually two things. One thing is that this approach could also work for cities. And on the other hand, that cities are really hotspots for circular economy. Actually, I don't need to convince you of that. Um, things, everything flows together in cities. There are also a lot of business actors around. Cities are not too much affected by lobbyists and are actually a, a, a policy level that's really close to citizens. Um, yeah, and also the small scale is also an advantage for stakeholder management and getting the data. At least that's what I could experience already. But there are some challenges. Um, first of all, uh, cities are very diverse not only in ambitions, but also in time and resources they're willing to invest in uh, monitoring and also just the place and the situation of a city. Um, circular economy um, in our region is about repair and the sharing economy and car sharing and these kind of things. 
maybe in other parts of the world, um, this is rather about how you can make sure not everything goes to the landfill. So that's a completely different story, but we, we want to serve everybody uh, somehow with city monitoring. Um, if we make a monitor that's only there for the most advanced cities, it's not delivering its purpose. Um, in terms of data gaps, um, some data stores that are readily available at a city level, like waste data, that's a major example. Um, because the distance with citizens is quite close and with actors, you can get quite some data from service if you find the resources to do them. A challenge is um, yeah, the city boundaries, how to deal with them, because the way data are captured, um, they don't allow you to tell something about what's coming in and leaving your cities. Uh, think of mobility of uh, goods and so on. Trucks are driving around, but it's they, they, there is no border control at the entrance of a city. So if you want to make an MFA at the city level, it's 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 quite complicated. Um, so that some of the data gaps there are actually more. Um, well, I think for now the um, a major conclusion for me is that there is no standard framework available for cities. Um, if they if a city really says I want to make my monitor. Um, there is a material they can consult, but it, it's 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 not easy and straight, straightforward to get her. There is some really nice source available. Um, the speech of OECD is one major source of information for cities. Um, there is interesting reports on this slide and also the example of uh, the city of Amsterdam is also quite instructive when it's about which methodologies could work to set up a monitor. This is really, uh, ongoing and um, myself I will also be contributing in further diving in this challenge um, wrapping up this speech um, yeah our um, idea of how to monitor circular economy in Flanders could be translated to the city level um, in a sense that um, yeah it's 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 possible to to um, yeah to conceive similar indicators and um, to to go for um, certain data sources um, but yeah the the challenges in data at the city level are a bit different comparing to the regional of the country level um, but um, yeah there is quite a need of knowledge building in data governance uh, to move to the next level of C indicators because also at the city level the state of the art is um, you can try to put together as much available data you can find, but the real challenge is create new data, find new data sources, or make available data that are not accessible, make them accessible for monitoring. Um, in case you want to know more about our work on CE monitoring, you can consult our website, or if you want to get in contact with me, then you have my email address here. Thanks a lot for your attention. Wonderful. Thanks very much, both Luke and Elmar, for that very interesting presentation. Um, a really very valuable approach, I think, that all of us can have a look at closely. Um, and I yeah, would advise everyone to look very closely at those monitoring systems and this use of societal need satisfiers, I think, is a very interesting one. Um, we haven't, we've, we've run a little bit over time here now, so I'm actually going to propose that we don't have the short coffee break that we'd included within the agenda and we move straight across to the city presentations um, as well to see how these systems are being applied by the the, the um, uh, signatories of the Circular Cities Declaration. But before I do that, are there any direct questions to, to Luke and Elma about what is being applied in Flanders? It appears not at the moment. We have the, the chat function as always though, so please keep those coming as, as was done after Anders presentation. Um, and that means I think we'll go across to our next presentation. And I think we have, first of all, uh, we have Jan to present on the City of Leuven. So over to you. Hopefully you will be able to share your presentation directly. Okay, thank you. I'll try to share my screen. Can you see this? We can, yes. Okay. I'll try to tell you as much as I can in five minutes. Um, well, um, some thoughts about the way we in, in the city of Leuven try to uh, build up a system to, to monitor our circular strategy. 
I think that the general philosophy for our strategy and our follow-up system is, first of all, we've made the, the choice to have a, a formal urban circular strategy. That's what we did. It, it's, it, uh, it turns out to be a very good decision. It is useful. It is uh, effective. Uh, our general philosophy is do not waste too much time in, in important and very useful academic and theoretical discussions on the ideal governance, the ideal monitoring system. Uh, what we did with the strategy and with the follow-up system is let's just start with what we have, even if it's not perfect. Let's see how far we can get year by year. And also important, um, because this is, this is the first policy period that we have an explicit circular strategy, let's say work in a kind of open and flexible way. Um, and and what we started with can be completely different in, in the, the next government period. So this is a bit the general philosophy of the way how we work. Um, where does the strategy come from? As I said, uh, in Belgium, we have policy cycles of six years at the local uh, level. And with the new local uh, city government for this period, uh, there was a new coalition and it was an explicit choice in the policy program to, to have a circular policy, circular strategy. Um, so this is in the official documents of the, of the city. Um, well, this would require some, some more time, but uh, let's say in general terms um, concerning policy on climate, on circular economy in, in Leuven, you have kind of a, well, it's a kind of a fluid governance model. You have an important role for the city, the city government. And there's also, uh, it was also mentioned already in the presentation by, by Luc. There's a network organization, Leuven 2030, that plays an important role in, in let's say, um, uh, the implementation of climate policy, bringing together all partners, uh, accelerating things. And so it, it goes a bit together, but it's too much to explain everything. As long as it works, that's what's important for me. Well, we made a decision to have a circular policy uh, that meant, uh, among other two formal things, we had a formal circular strategy that was one uh, decision. The second was that we had a, a specific circular platform um, and uh, Luke, who you saw some minutes ago, is one of the members of our platform. We bring together all the elephant, uh, relevant stakeholders, actors at the city level that are connected with the idea of um, trying to enhance the circular policy at, at the urban level. For instance, all the, the city departments, um, the university, um, uh, the, the uh, industry organization, they work together. Uh, we, we meet four times a year. Um, and this turns out to be, it's a flexible, but a very useful uh, platform to um, speed things up. Uh, as I said, so we had a the specific choice to have a circular strategy. Uh, you see in this slide the different priorities we have in our strategy. Um, so we have five plus one priorities and 28 actions. It's something like this. So it's, it's not too impressive, but it's very useful. Um, um, maybe when we do it again next time, it will be much more detailed. It will be much more elaborated, but it turned out to be very useful. For instance, uh, we started with a circle strategy. A year later, the city had to um, uh, draft a climate action program. We just could transfer the whole structure of our circular strategy into the climate strategy, which was very useful. So we have priorities, actions, and we also had a timing uh, with what we had to do to, um, to make uh, things work. Um, concerning the follow-up and the monitoring, as I said, we have a kind of a pragmatic approach. Um, see how far we can get for this first uh, circular strategy and learn as much as we can to have another one in the next period. What we do, we do different things, I think. Uh, seen from the strategy, we have a kind of progress reporting, uh, general evaluation on an annual basis, and we are working on a follow-up tool for the objectives. Next to this, there is um, um, initiatives by Leuven 2030, 
they have been working and still are working on a more general monitoring for everything to do with the climate policy. Leuven is, is uh, preparing itself to be a climate neutral city. And in the recent um, initiative by the European Commission, it's, it's, uh, Leuven is one of the 100 cities in Europe that will have to become even uh, in an earlier basis, um, a climate neutral city. So there's lots of things going on to prepare a general monitor. In the meantime, we continue with our work. There's also been important scientific work by Kaiu Leuven. Um, and we try to, let's say, navigate within the setting to do what we can to have a useful kind of follow-up and not, um, let's say, not uh, closing doors to a more elaborate system in the coming years. So how do we do it? Uh, the most easy thing is that we make... Uh, quarterly progress reports. I don't have everything in English, but you, you can get uh, the meaning by looking at it, I think. So we try in preparation for every platform meeting, you make a, a large document with action per action. What have we done uh, in the months that are past? Uh, what has been done, what needs to be done? And every year we make a general review for the whole year. And this is presented to the city government, and we also present it in the committee of the city council, which is very useful because it, it uh, let's say every year there's more enthusiasm among the members of the city council. That's what I notice when I present results. Uh, this, this is this is important also because uh, the the circular strategy was approved in the city council with uh, uh, an unanimous vote, so it's important to give a transparent. Um, progress report to the members of the city council. As I said, uh, within Leuven 2030, work is being done to prepare a comprehensive monitoring system. Uh, one of the first results of this work uh, was, let's say, a test version of a monitoring system. And there was an, uh, a big part dealing with circular economy. We worked very closely together with the researchers to, to prepare this. This was very useful, important work, uh, but at the moment, it, this specific monitor is not being, uh, let's say the work is not being continued because they're working on a, on a new system. Um, then, so we started with, with a strategy and we had the intention to halfway have a kind of update and see what we could improve in our strategy. And one of the elements was that we uh, had the intention to add concrete goals which weren't there when we started. We only had the actions and we wanted to add some goals. And this is what, what we did in the update. Uh, it was made in consultation, the platform, and it was also a pragmatic approach because it's as good as it can be now. This means that um, it is varying in, in, in how they are formulated. You see some examples. So let's say some of them are very specific. Some of them are quite general. Some of them are based on uh, other strategies that are available. Um, this means that not every one of this is, let's say, formulated in a, in a smart sense, uh, but they are what they are, and we can uh, work with them. And um, we also have the, the possibility to year by year change what we have. If we, if we are able to make some of these goals more specific uh, next year, we will do it. And um, the main purpose is try to see what, what we can do with this. If, if the results are useful at all, we will see and use all this information together with what is being developed at the scientific level to prepare for the next policy periods uh, and have a, a better system. So the follow-up system is, um, this means working on structure to collect the necessary data. This means very, very concrete terms, uh, when we look at the list of the goals, try to find someone within administration, can you do this, which service has to do this? Uh, and that's, let's say, an important element of the exercise. The assessment is more a qualitative one, uh, but with, it gives us the, the possibility to uh, adapt it every year. This means uh, that we have uh, something like this for every action, every goal, we try to find which person within the administration or which organization is responsible for 
trying to give us the data. Uh, this, uh, if, if we, we try to find it, we can also find what we cannot find. And this is useful as well for the next year. And then we have a general kind of uh, evaluation. Um, it's a very basic system, but I think it will be useful uh, for every goal. We try to have uh, uh, the data that we have and also give kind of a comment. Uh, was, it, was it hard to have data? Are these data, in, in your view, relevant at all? Or don't they tell anything at all? It's possible. Um, we will try to do this every year. And let's say the, the, the monitor itself is an aim at itself. We, we try to see whether it was useful or not. And we also have a list of all the things that still have to be done because lots of elements are not very concrete. Uh, there is no idea yet for some elements what kind of indicators we will have to use. So this will be something we, we do also year by year, try to fill in uh, the gaps. Let's say a very short conclusion because monitoring is one element. Uh, let's say the relationship of the, the strategy towards the reality is something else. What is frustrating in a general sense for the strategy and also I think for the monitoring things is we, we have to try to evolve from a, a logic, from pilot projects to a more systemic policy. This is frustrating for everyone working in, in a more of advanced way at city level with, we try to, to collect as much subsidies as we can, but it's always in the logic of projects, pilot projects, new methodology every every time you have to start again and um, sometimes it, it would be more useful to have a more structural financing what which what is uh, let's say a, a kind of challenge is we have to be sufficiently open to what will come uh, when we start now um, in next year there will be maybe a very interesting uh, research that will be published but in the meantime, we have set up our system and it has to be open enough so that we can adapt to what will come, but we cannot adapt it constantly. And this is something um, uh, that is useful to see that there is a different logic and a different time cycle for people working in the city government and people working in the university. The policy cycles do not always match. Uh, and in the city government, you need to take a decision and the time uh, to, to work it out is not always the same as the time uh, in which research is done. But the conclusion is, of course, we, and, and this is what is pressing on us all, we, we have an urgent need for real impact in absolute terms. And uh, this must be the priority, of course. So this was it. It was very, very fast. My excuses for this, but hopefully it was useful. Yeah, and thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think we, we're going to have to move on quite quickly because we are running quite a bit over time at the moment. But I, certainly, I think a lot of the cities, the signatories of this will recognize themselves in, in, in what you're saying there, Jan, and the, the need to take a pragmatic approach. There's questions regarding the harmonization in different uh, Flanders cities, perhaps you could have a look at the, the chat here as well. And of course, we can encourage people to get directly in touch with you as well to find out more. It will be very interesting to follow that process as it, as it continues. Um, now we're, we're going to move on to our last presentation before we then split out into breakout groups. Um, and here we're moving to Paris this time. Adrien, do you have um, a presentation that you would like to share with us as well? Yes, uh, I try. Okay. Yeah, we can see it now. And if you could try and keep it down in time, that would be really helpful. So we've got a bit of time for our discussions as well. Yes, uh, I go really quickly. So, and you can uh, ask me a question later if you want. Sorry in advance for my English as well. <laughs> um, okay, so just... Uh, uh, a few words about the Greater Paris Metropolis. Uh, it's um, a local authority that, that's gathering uh, the city of Paris and uh, 130 towns uh, surrounding. So it's about uh, 7.2 million inhabitants. Um, it's a really dense 
and Najin territory uh, with a lot of uh, uh, construction of demolition, uh, uh, really dependent from uh, surrounding and more uh, far uh, and further territories. Uh, so we have a lot, lot of issues concerning regarding uh, circular economy that we're trying to, to address. I uh, just uh, spotted some of the, the competencies and, uh, and the, 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 the big schemes that uh, the, the metropole is, uh, is building. Uh, so uh, climate, uh, climate plan, uh, territorial cohesion plan, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, more specifically can, uh, regarding circular economy, we have been addressing this, uh, this topic since uh, our creation through three uh, main pillars uh, on the knowledge uh, issue. Uh, we have built um, a share for uh, circular economy and urban metabolism with the University uh, Gustave Eiffel, that's a big university uh, in the east of Paris, and uh, that is building uh, indicators, metrics, tools uh, for, um, for uh, Metropole and all these partners on the territory, public, pri private, uh, also doing training. Uh, we have a big issue uh, on raising awareness of all uh, stakeholders through uh, a big event uh, each year uh, with uh, uh, an internet platform dedicated uh, to, to gather best practices, to, to gather project uh, uh, forums, uh, this kind of things. Um, and finally, we have been tra trying to implement through uh, dedicated projects, uh, a, a program uh, directed to um, public and private procurement to include um, targets, goals regarding to circular social uh, economy, uh, a program directly addressed to the construction uh, sector that is really uh, um, uh, a big, big issue uh, today in Greater Paris. So to to to, uh, to modify uh, to, to to have better demand uh, with uh, public and uh, private actors to help uh, developing new uh, new uh, uh, offer supply for circular economy as well. Trying to identify some uh, some lands for it. Uh, to, to give subsidies, uh, etc. And finally, we have a focus as well on industrial symbiosis with um, uh, areas and uh, uh, economic uh, development areas uh, around the, the, the metropole. Basically, we, uh, we have been conducting uh, material flow analysis uh, that have been uh, ended this year. Uh, I will give you the, the link for it. Uh, you can find all the, 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 the big results. Uh, we mixed uh, a top-down and a more bottom-up uh, bottom approach with modelization, uh, this kind of things, to, uh, to gather some results uh, on generally uh, all the flows, but also doing a, a focus on, uh, on specific flows uh, with big uh, stakes, uh, like building materials, like uh, food products and uh, bio waste, like um, uh, electronic uh, uh, products and waste to identify stocks, flows, uh, uh, as well as um, actors that deal uh, with these flows today and to identify new, uh, new, uh, uh, new projects uh, as well on the territory. Uh, we also uh, uh, had some projections uh, on how uh, flows should uh, uh, move uh, in next years uh, regarding uh, building uh, goals, uh, regarding uh, 
demographic evolution uh, to give us some insights about how we should develop sobriety, uh, circular economy globally. Uh, the big issue for us is to uh, first to to to, to con uh, convince uh, internally that we have to to combine uh, our strategic goals regarding uh, urban development and uh, sobriety uh, circular economy. So uh, from this uh, from this study, we developed uh, this year a circular and social economy strategy. Uh, we made the choice from the beginning of our action to combine both subjects uh, for uh, the circular economy transition to be uh, um, addressing as well uh, human and social uh, issues. Uh, we have big issue to, to, to have an uh, equilibrium to the um, metropole because there are strong polarities uh, socially and uh, economically. Uh, so we have strategic goals uh, like saving resources, natural resources, developing new economic sectors, uh, supporting corporations, strengthening the, the resilience of the territory, and some levers for action uh, like finance, like uh, uh, animation, territorial animation, like uh, uh, land. Uh, uh, I spoke about it. It's a really scarce resource but we try to, to allocate more efficiently to, to, uh, to circular economy activities. And so we have five uh, main pillars for the strategy. Uh, the issue of exemplarity through uh, public procurement strategy, through uh, in investment, because we have big uh, investment funds uh, to be used by uh, all the towns and cities of the of our metropole. Uh, we have the issue of uh, the construction sector. Uh, uh, so we have to, to, to we, we develop some, some programs for renovation, uh, including circular economy and uh, resources issues. Uh, we are working on a, on a pact, big pact with economic and public actors uh, to, to accelerate uh, transition of the sectors, uh, etc. We have a second sectoral uh, priority on food and uh, food waste uh, recycling, uh, and a third on uh, promotion of uh, the three R, like reduce, uh, repair, reuse, recycling, uh, to extend the life of goods, to develop new economic uh, activities uh, on this topic. Uh, the, the metropolitan, metropolitan scale. And finally, supporting circular and social based transition of municipalities and territories using our, uh, our main, uh, main tools and uh, activities on it. Uh, and um, I, regarding the, 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 the subject of today, I could uh, have had a uh, lot of metrics that, that uh, we are using uh, to, to monitor this strategy. We have uh, uh, for each pillars uh, certain numbers of, uh, of, um, of uh, actions that you can find uh, uh, quite easily uh, on our website. And for each action, we have uh, targets uh, quantified and qualified. We have also um, uh, um, a, 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 a certain amount of, uh, of metrics that have been developed by our, our chair, by Gustave Eiffel University, uh, that we could uh, share with you as well. Regarding our uh, functioning, our governance, uh, finance, uh, uh, um, more uh, means objectives, and also uh, more uh, result-based uh, objectives uh, regarding uh, impacts and uh, uh, trans transition globally on the territory. That's, uh, that's it for me. 
Adrian, thank you very much. And yeah, it would be very useful to then have a link to those uh, more specific yes, metrics. I think if, if that's possible, that would be very good to look into. Um, but thanks very much for the presentations. If there are any very short questions, we can address those now. I can see there's a lot of conversation happening in the chat box as well. If not, then I propose that we move on to the next stage. I hope people have come with a little bit of extra time as we are running a little bit late, but um, as always with these webinars, we want to get some discussion going between those who are participating. Um, the next session is therefore to split up into three different um, working groups. I'm just going to share my screen quickly if I can work out how to do it again. Shouldn't really be that complicated, but it always seems to be. Okay. Can everybody see the, the, the slide there? We can, yeah. You can, great. Okay, so this uh, is the format for the next, well, I think we're probably going to say 20 minutes because we don't have any more than that. Um, you're going to be randomly assigned to breakout rooms, uh, which will be chaired by my colleagues, uh, Simon, Dominic, and Nikolai. And the idea is to go through uh, some discussion points in relation to monitoring at the city and regional level. So looking at whether you have begun to monitor the circular transition, what types of indicators you have focused on, if you think that there are any sectors that lend themselves to being monitored, or probably more importantly, are particularly challenging to monitoring, and obviously, Following the discussion this morning, uh, this afternoon, I think the economic and societal indicators are particularly relevant to talk about um, and what challenges you may have faced in setting up a monitoring framework. Once we've had that discussion, then we will have a short report back period um, at the end. So, uh, Dom, over to you, I think, to split us up into three separate groups. I'm not sure if you need our active involvement in this process at this stage. I don't need your active involvement no i just need a short moment um to complete and then we in the meantime at what time should we come back uh good point so i think we need to come back basically on the dot of yeah on the dot of four o'clock i think we have to reconvene and i hope that most people can stay with us for just a few minutes at the end of that for final conclusions and next steps uh, okay, so your rooms are ready. I will open the rooms and you will be directed to one of three. Great. Thank you, Dominic. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, yes, as um, as Simon mentioned at the end of that, it, um, hopefully you found what we've heard so far interesting, and we wanted to use this opportunity uh, to explore your experiences. Uh, we have a couple of the presenters in the room with us today anyway, so if uh, any questions arose that you didn't want to ask in front of the group, we can do that. But the focus really, um, from my point of view, is to understand um, whether you, as signatories to the Circular Cities Declaration, have begun monitoring yet. Um, and I think, so the first question I will ask is, A, have you? And in, in which case, um, what have you um, begun to focus on if uh, you've started monitoring the circular economy? And whilst hopefully someone will um, start um, with their response, I will bring up the slides just to prompt any, um, any thoughts. So is there anyone who would like to first of all contribute and say that they have begun monitoring or possibly no one here has, in which case we can explore the challenges yeah, that have resulted in that. Maybe we could also uh, try to specify the question, have you been monitoring impact or, or progress in, in governance? That's that's a, a big a big difference. Um, a lot of efforts that, that, that the city uh, will do uh, can be monitored in, in terms of, okay, what, what amount of time and money do we put into it and what are the outcomes of a certain project. So probably 
there will be uh, basic monitoring and evaluate policy evaluation will will be there but um maybe there there is also someone who says okay i'm, I'm also looking into you know uh, the impact of uh, uh, the real impact uh, uh, on the longer term on on ecology jobs uh, um, um climate etc that's um, that's a, a harder a bigger question about monitoring I can say something mm -hmm. just, to, <laughs> just to get the discussion going. Uh, I'm Emma from City of Malmö in Sweden. Uh, we have, um, of course, we monitor things. Uh, we monitor waste, for instance. Uh, we monitor CO2, both um, within the organization. We did a um, calculation for all of the organization's emissions uh, this year. Um, we also um, calculate energy, water, uh, we calculate internal reuse, uh, but I still wouldn't really say that we monitor the circular economy. We don't monitor the development and the shift in the society, only then related to, to waste, but yeah, as we have heard today already waste is only one part of the circular economy and we don't want to stuck there we want to um yeah monitor and evaluate other things as well and oh no i'm out if you had something go ahead yes i'm i'm uh, of course interested if you say we monitor climate emissions or, or co2 emissions and and uh and water but that's not related to material use it's related to energy production and energy use probably yeah mostly yeah um yeah. the internal um uh, emission um data we calculated it that that's also uh, um in like the scope three um, right. yeah. aspect uh yeah mm -hmm. but not the all, all of the other um, um mm -hmm. categories no yeah and would you say this comes back to what was mentioned earlier in terms of data and it sounds like what you feel you measure at the moment is what is easily quantifiable within what you would call the circular economy but it's the less tangible things exactly no it's yeah it's what's there and and easy to to get hold of definitely and of the other cities who are here as well, is that something that you recognize as well? Maybe waste is easier to capture because you have to necessarily report it. Um, it's very easy to weigh, if you like, uh, to quantify, but it's the other things that are more difficult. Uh, we can't hear you, Tobias. I think you are talking. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry, yes, Tobias from uh, Zurich. Yes, uh, it's uh, it relates a lot to where we are standing, what I just heard. Um, waste is just a very conventional way to start measuring because there you already have the data from the waste collection process. We also are in the process of um, publishing our strategy that we have worked on. So really closely linked to that. Now we are thinking about the, the right indicators, how to measure that. And up to now, we also have uh, the greenhouse gas emissions because that there we have a political driver. We have uh, the goal of net zero. And also this is linked to uh, both direct and indirect uh, emissions. So for the indirect emissions, we have a minus 30% goal. So that leads us directly to the need of measuring material uh, and goods related uh, emissions, uh, gray emissions within these uh, materials. So there we sort of have the link, but we don't yet have a, uh, a clear materiality, circularity indicator. 
So we have the, the energy measurements, the waste and recycling rate and the greenhouse gas. And we are up to now basically uh, foc focusing or starting from there. And, uh, and we have sort of more action uh, impact related measures uh, where we are looking at the amount of money that we uh, put into the system to foster additional business related to repairing in uh, the repairing business in the city. Uh, that is uh, the next upcoming uh, measure that we are in that we are uh, implementing. Okay, wonderful. Um... And Elmar, I suppose, is is waste where you started on your journey of yes, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, how okay, how did the that transition? And this is also this is also a challenge because um, for for Belgium specifically because we have uh, the the competence and the responsibility to take care of our waste as a region, the region of Flanders, which is different from the region of Brussels and the region of uh, Walloon. Um, the Walloon region, and then you have the federal agency that, that uh, have the responsibility to take care of the economic market that we all share as a, as a, as a country. Um, but in a circular economy, then you're talking about waste, which, which is important for us as a starting point, as, as mentioned. And we have all the data and we are refining it uh, each, each year or with each um, um, update of, of European uh, regulation we update also our the, the way that we uh, uh, look at uh, waste indicators um, but at the same time we have to combine it with the the economic indicators and and uh, about innovation as well and about resilience and about uh, the amount of investments in, in circular economy and then it gets uh, it gets really complicated for a region um, and e and I think even more for for a city because you can even it's, it's even harder to to demarcate your 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 area, what's your impact in 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 all these uh, uh, on these different um, uh, sectors and companies that that are located in your city boundaries, but at the same time they and they operate on a broader level, country level or international level. The same with uh, consumption, but then then you have a bit more um, confidence. Uh, you can be a bit more confident that you. Are measuring uh, something that really has to do with your, with your citizens and with your, uh, the, the way that they consume and produce. So I think um, indicators on repair and reuse in the city boundaries are uh, within city boundaries are feasible in the in the short term to to get a grip on that. Um, that that's um, that's the way I, I look at it. And then, um, how, how would you measure repair, etc.? I mean, do you mean for the um municipal organization in that case or for the society as a whole and how, how now for indeed uh, of course um you should measure it uh, um based on a methodology that 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 is uh, preferably harmonized and shared with uh, other cities um for example the share repair project um and i think some that's an interact project uh, that a uh, couple of cities from flanders um collaborate with that project um they they try to have a, a, mon a monitoring way of, of repair within a city um, and it's um, it's something that, that really helps uh, to structure the way uh, repair is taking place um, and and that that can can be applied to other cities as well uh, this this uh, this knowledge uh, that's been developed um, and it starts of course with with uh, knowing what are the repair initiatives in your uh, in your city um, and, and also support these initiatives. And then if you support them, you can also ask for them to, to measure and to, to keep track of what they are doing. And also work with companies that, that are um, actually uh, offering repair services. Is there a... No, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm going to details now. I just think about all the um, when you repair your shoes your clothes mm -hmm. uh at the i don't know uh, white goods do you say that yeah. i mean yeah. um 
it will be really interesting to measure but uh, yeah. i don't know for a big city like malmo and others um mm -hmm. it's the the that the feels um, really difficult yeah of course you can only measure like we measure reuse uh in in flanders then we have an actual number uh, and then a target of reuse that we want to achieve in our region but it's a target that is connected to the subsidizing of reuse centers of course there is a lot of reuse outside these centers and then then it's much much more difficult to to get a hold of of data what are people reusing swapping lending uh, uh repairing by themselves it's not it's not in the figures but um, we try to to have a bigger picture and a bigger methodology a better methodology for that as well um, and the researchers from Kai Leuven or, or Luc has, has worked on that as well so we have a six or seven kilograms per inhabitant target for reuse through the reuse centers that we also as a Flemish government and city municipalities support and then we see that there is about 30 to 35 kilograms per inhabitant reuse um, uh, by other channels uh, you know informal channels and and, uh, and secondhand good markets and so forth but this number is is not monitored yearly it's it's uh, it's been done only by one one research so far but that could be interesting yeah that was actually going to be my question as well is how you make sure you're not kind of under calculating through these less formalized routes for reuse and yeah. repair uh, and so am i right in understanding that it was a kind of modeled figure uh, that was generated by luke yeah okay um, fantastic i'm conscious that we have five minutes remaining and i'd like to well there are lots of challenges i'm mm -hmm. sure you're all aware but i want to sort of whilst addressing what the challenges are that have you've faced also think about what the solutions might be as well so the final question on this slide is what challenges have you faced in setting up a monitoring framework so on the political side of things on the measurement is there data or no data um, and a resource uh, as well you know just from a, a authority perspective just don't have the time to it to put to it um, so yes if i open the floor and if there's any anyone who has any uh thoughts on that um adrian obviously your presentation gave us an insight into some of the work that you've done in paris and i don't know whether you had the, so any challenges uh, and whether they were overcome in order to get you to where you are now yes um relating to data uh, um, what we found it, uh, is uh, that uh, the traditional material flow analysis methodologies are really, really complicated to, 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 to be applied at, uh, at a city level. Uh, almost impossible. You have to, to, to develop new methodologies uh, uh, through modelization, uh, but the light uh, the traditional uh, Eurostat methodology is not uh, is not uh, is not working well. Uh, so I, I think there there is a need for this to like to to have more um, more addressed methodologies for cities uh, at a level. Um, for the, this is for the resource uh, really indicator uh, indicators for the more uh, social uh, economic ones uh, it's a bit yeah the same the, the methodologies are not clearly uh, uh, definition are not really uh, defined so it's complicated to to, to uh, i think to to have uh, harmonized uh, things and compared to, to follow uh, indicators. So this could be a, a, a work to do. It's, uh, the, the work from uh, OECD's kind of things are, are very interesting in that sense. Um, I think for, for uh, at a political, uh, from a political point of view, uh, developing a new methodology on, 
indicators uh, based on uh, the work uh, creation potential, this kind of things are really uh, useful to, to convince. Uh, also to, to facilitate the um, to conven uh, convergence between uh, climate and resource issues. There are some work uh, exi existing on it uh, that have been uh, presented in uh, previous uh, reunions from the from Clay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to add uh, to the political side of, of things. Um, I, I actually would like to turn it around. I don't think uh, the methodology and data are the biggest problem because political willingness to and, and, and support to develop these methodologies is still lacking. So we first should focus on willingness and political support because when you actually include, and this is what politicians also see, if you include um, CO2 emissions and environmental uh, indicators to your societal systems, if you link it, then it can be really confronting. It can be really confronting. And then they say, okay, well, wait a minute. We won't, uh, you, we won't want you to show us how our textile consumption is affecting the lives of people in Bangladesh, because it's in the numbers, it's in the figures, and you can see it, that's, that it's happening, that you're cross, um, that you're crossing planetary boundaries with the use of materials in your city. And then it's get really, it's getting really um, sensitive. And then you should be ready as a city to say, okay, yes, our material footprint is very big and we want to take a responsibility um, because we are affecting the lives of people and the health of the planet and in, in different places in the, in the world. It's an uncomfortable truth that the politicians have to acknowledge before yeah. maybe they... And, and if if it's if it wasn't so uncomfortable, then um, many cities and also European legislators would have um, would have made more progress on on methodologies and guidelines. Definitely. Fantastic. Okay, and that brings us nicely to four o'clock. I'm afraid so that is the <laughs> end of the time that we have together. Um, I don't know exactly how we leave, uh, but if you can figure it out, then we'll join back into the main room, and hopefully, I'll see you there. Uh, let's see how we can uh, move out here. <laughs> There's, a bottom, There's, a There's a bottom in the right. right. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Um, All right. Leave room. Bye. Uh, bonne question. Moi, je pense que il faut insister un peu. Enfin, la différence, c'est un peu les écosystèmes, quoi, qui sont pas du tout. No. My group is back in the main room. The rest isn't. <laughs> I said we can carry on in that case. Yeah. I, I really agree with to what uh, Elmer said, uh, but also I in here, and I guess that also goes for other cities. They, the politicians really like to talk about circular economy mm -hmm. um, and not about uh, decreasing, uh, changing etc because circular economy sounds so positive and uh, it doesn't always um, stress the importance of yeah decreasing um quitting etc so I, I, I would say that that at least for us is good uh, because um, of course we have to talk about the problems behind our consumption um, and i think we need to talk more about decreasing but when we do it in a circular economy uh, environment, um, it becomes more positive and, and that is good for us at the moment, at least. Yes, it's a good way to discuss things. Um, it opens up perspectives, definitely. And I really think it's interesting that more and more start to measure like circular jobs. Um, I know that Eskilstuna is also a signatory. They're also starting to do that now. And I think we will also look at the possibilities of, of doing that because jobs is a um, really high um, priority for the politicians in Sidi Malmö.
It's a good mm -hmm. argument, yeah, that will uh, boost the topic. Mm -hmm. Feels like one in which the methodology is probably further advanced than some of the others necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's not um, perfect way to measure, it's still a, a way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Welcome back, room one. By the looks of things, that's it. Uh, yep. Just right. room room two's uh, discussion is too interesting, apparently. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Depends how strict the uh, the moderator is. I think about closing things off maybe well, we were just very briefly discussing in our group at the end that if there's appetite amongst the the the, the wider group to think about um, some more form of structured collaboration on this uh, some type of working group perhaps within the, the the group of signatories something we need to work on a little bit in terms of uh, capacities and structure i think but for me it would be quite interesting i think to um to provide a, a longer platform for these types of discussions it's very difficult to address these issues in one go in a session like this i could take the nuclear option and just close the rooms i think that's probably the best thing Tom. <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh, they've got a 60 second countdown anyway. Oh, right. Okay. Very good. Mm. Disappointing. Not to worry. Can you let me know when everyone's back, Dom, because I can't actually see you now. And I think that's just happened. Has it? Leave. Uh, Very good. Yeah. Right. Okay. So apologize for yeah having to bring everyone back by force to 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 wrap up here. But um, yeah, I can see discussions were going on. You have the shared contacts file between the signatories and the support partners, um, which I think we can share again after this. So you have everyone's contact details to continue those discussions bilaterally in any case. Um, but it would be good to have a quick wrap up of the discussions that took place in each of the groups. So in fact, yes, I shouldn't be sharing this at the moment. Maybe I could ask each of the, um, the facilitators to quickly um, report back on what was discussed. Don, maybe we can go over to you first. Yes, absolutely. So um, in my group, we first of all discussed what is currently sort of um, the basis for monitoring within the cities um, and very quickly settled on the fact that it's things that are tangibly or easy to quantify. Um, so typically kind of waste and that kind of thing, those uh, metrics are the ones that are um, focused upon and um, but it, it didn't feel amongst the participants that this was real um, and complete monitoring of the circular economy. Um, and so we then sort of discussed around um, reuse and how efficiently and effectively that could be monitored within the city um, and fin uh, finished on trying to think of some solutions to challenges, uh, mostly around the political side of things, acknowledging that um, starting to put numbers to the circular economy could be quite an uncomfortable truth um, for many politicians and uh, understanding the real um, depth of impact of um, a metabolism of a city um, and that it might not necessarily be therefore the missing methodologies that are preventing cities from monitoring uh, the less tangible aspects of the circular economy uh, rather political will um, and support um, but that possibly jobs which might be something that's easier 
uh, to quantify um, could be something that is also very politically acceptable as well. Interesting. Yeah, it's, this topic came up in our group as well. But, but Simon, let's go over to you next and uh, you could report back. Thanks. So in the group, uh, we had cities like uh, London, Ljubljana, Zurich, Arlem, um, and what else? Eskilstuna, and you know, of course, Leuven. And so we discussed uh, monitoring. Uh, so for most cities, uh, this is something that is uh, relatively, relatively new and that is being developed. And the first step has always been to develop a strategy first and then to start thinking about indicators and how to measure progress and impacts. Um, we congratulated uh, Zurich for their referendum on uh, circular economy. Circular economy is now part of the constitution, so well done Zurich. Um, and then we had a completing comment um, with uh, Leuven and Ljubljana on the, the resources and the fact that uh, the lack of funding, especially at national level for cities, is a real issue, it's a real barrier, uh, not only for measuring circular economy, but for the circular transition itself. That's it. Thank you, Simon. Okay, and uh, Helena, last, if you are with us. Yes, I'm here. Yes. So we had a very rich discussion that I touched upon many things. So it was quite nice to see the, how Prague, Michele, Helen, and uh, Re-London are doing different types of measurements. What's included varies a lot. So Re-London does include consumption-based emissions on textiles and food, whereas, for example, Michele is also looking at how much of the procurement includes uh, circular criteria. One, the challenges that were mentioned is that they're just at the beginning of the process, so it's a bit of a learning curve. And collecting statistics is scattered in different places, and sometimes the cities themselves don't own all the data. So that can be a lot of work for someone to actually have the full picture. And the city of Mechelen was mentioning that they take a pragmatic approach by only trying to monitor what they can follow up on. So what's realistic for them to do. So sometimes there's these practical realities that come in play. And there was um, also this idea that, you know, often we talk about circular economy along the digital transition and what kind of data we'll need in the future with these new technologies or how this process will continue. So. This is just a deep, a very quick insights into these discussions. Hey, many thanks, Helena, and thanks to everyone for participating in those discussions and also for your patience in running over time as we are now. Um, before we close, there was, uh, we'd hoped that um, uh, a colleague from DGRTD from the European Commission was going to be here to present as well. He wanted to come, but it obviously seems that his other meeting has overrun uh, because he wanted to talk about what is happening at the Commission level. Um, in the foreseeable future, which I hope will also be relevant for us. Um, and there will be uh, a, a study carried out, uh, well, um, a, a very in-depth study in the next uh, year or two around this establishment of a monitoring system um, at the European level for the circular economy, uh, which can operate at multiple different levels, at the sectoral level, but also at the city level, for example, and should uh, work to help inform circular economy uh, policies at the European level, but should also be of use for us working at the local and regional levels as well. So this is an area that we have to watch very closely, um, because as we can see, everyone is taking a, a rather different angle, rather different approach to this work, uh, which is understandable, um, of course, but the more that we can do this in a, in a coherent, collective and similar way, of course, the better for all of us. So um, I can sense there's quite a lot of enthusiasm for further collaboration on this topic within the group. Um, so I hope that there will be continued exchange between those who participated here um, and others within the declaration. And as mentioned, hopefully we can see if there's some form of, of more structured, longer term collaboration about this topic that we can establish. Just before we finish, I would like to share just a couple of upcoming activities with you as well. Um, so I will now share my screen again. Hopefully you can all see this. Just quickly to mention another couple of webinars that are happening in the next uh, week or two. Um, I think most of you are aware of the um, uh, C3 initiative from EIB. In fact, I think we have with us an EIB colleague here today. So there will be a webinar um, on this uh, circular city center on the 5th of October. Um, you can see uh, the details on the screen there. Yeah. And also DGRTD themselves. 
we'll be having a webinar on the 13th of October looking at implementing circular systemic solutions in cities and regions, which is obviously connected to their circular cities and regions initiative. Um, yeah, there's a couple of further activities from the Circular Cities Declaration ourselves. In the next little while, we shall have an, uh, a newsletter being published in October and November. If you have any content, either from the side of signatories or from the support partners that you would like included in that, please send it to us and we shall include it. Um, and we will have another webinar starting early next year. We haven't set a date for that yet or a topic. We will send around um, a follow-up email asking for participants to vote on a next topic. We have several in mind already, but of course we would like to have input from all of you on this. Okay, so I think that is everything from this afternoon. Uh, many thanks to all of those who are still left at this stage. And of course, thank you very much to all of our presenters. Really interesting. As mentioned, we will share this recording. We will share the presentations as well uh, in our shared drive and send an email around to all of you um, and hopefully published also on the website as well. So thank you all very much and have a nice afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone.